This boxer is called the most dangerous person in the world. His opponents were losing to him even before the fight. Welcome to the World Era of Boxing channel. Before we begin, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video. Now, let's get started. In modern sports, ring fighting has become an exciting fighting game in which opponents are treated as comrades who solve common problems. The history of modern professional boxing is now so diverse, exciting, and rich in significant events. Throughout that long and varied history, there were champions who could morally crush an opponent before the fight even began. In the 1980s, a real heavyweight killer burst onto the scene, a powerful guy from Brooklyn named Mike Tyson. Without a doubt, his name is well known to everyone, and for a long time, he was considered generally invincible. However, it's no secret that in the 1990s, due to problems with the law, a wild lifestyle, and poor discipline, Mike noticeably lost his physical shape, which led to the first defeat in his career. Every boxer has to leave the ring at some point, and by the early 2000s, it became clear that this moment had come for Mike Tyson. After losing a fight with Dennis Williams, Mike decided to try his luck against the little-known Irish boxer, Kevin McBride. Obviously, the main reason for this was Mike's urgent need for money, since he was in debt by about $40 million, even though Mike himself professed that he was not motivated by money. On July 11, 2005, this fight took place at the MCI Center in Washington, D.C. Before the fight, Muhammad Ali, whose daughter Layla happened to be fighting on the Tyson McBride undercard that evening, visited Tyson's dressing room. The audience fiercely supported Tyson. Despite all of his past defeats and his behavior outside the ring, Iron Mike's popularity had not yet faded. But even Ali's parting words did not help Mike. From the very first rounds, it became clear that he lacked sharpness and aggression in his actions. He did not look convincing at all and could not cause much trouble for his opponent, although he was almost always ahead on points. Tyson looked much better in the fourth round of the fight when he succeeded in several successful attacks to the opponent's head and body, but Mike could not build on his success. In the sixth round, Tyson was visibly tired and began to fight dirty. First, he tried to twist McBride's right hand, and then he earned two penalty points for a clearly intentional headbutt that gave McBride a serious cut. Even with these actions, however, Mike was unable to take control of the fight. By the end of the sixth round, Mike found himself on the floor. He stayed there, looking confused, then struggled to get to his feet and walked slowly to his corner. He chose not to go out for the seventh round, refusing to continue the fight. Mike, first let's start with you. Did you want to continue? I want to apologize to the fans who paid money for this and lost time, Tyson said after the fight. Despite the loss, he looked surprisingly calm. I think it's time for me to retire. I see no point in any further appearances in the ring. I won't deceive myself and dishonor the sport to which I gave many years of my life. Appreciate your time. It's been great to watch your career. It's been up and down. We've seen a lot of things out of you, and tonight we appreciate your sportsmanship and the way you've handled this. Thank you very much, Tim Greg. Then McBride took the floor, and the first thing he said was, Mike, thank you. You are a legend. God bless you. Kevin, congratulations on your career and good luck. Now, I should have to make a lot of money. Kevin emphasized that Mike was stronger than him, that he was a warrior, but today was just not his day. I did what I had to do, McBride added. As for McBride's career, he did not take advantage of his success, and after defeating Tyson, he fought only eight more times, losing six, before retiring in 2011.
It has been more than 15 years since the ex-world boxing champion Mike Tyson ended his professional boxing career. And many other boxers would have been forgotten, but not Mike. Today, Mike is actively showing himself in movies and on TV. November 1st! I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm just ready. Specifically, the boxer appeared in all three parts of the Hangover movie franchise. By the way, man, where you get that cop car from? We, uh, stole it from these dumbass cops. Nice! As well as in the latest episode of the Scary Movie Comedy franchise. He even had his own animated TV show called Mike Tyson Mysteries. He also hosts the Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson podcast, which is one of the most popular fighting sports related podcasts. Like many sports superstars, Tyson spent his money on big houses, luxury cars, and even pet tigers. But make no mistake, Tyson is not completely finished with boxing. In 2020, Mike Tyson, age 54, and Roy Jones Jr., age 51, signed a deal to announce a fight, a match that all boxing fans had wanted to see for a long time. In a video that Mike posted on his Instagram, he announced his return to sports for the sake of holding several exhibition fights. Tyson has stated that the purposes of his return to the ring is to help other people and that he was ready to face any opponent who is willing to fight for charity. I'm just having a great time, looking great, showing off my new body and stuff. And anything is possible and my ego is starting to grow. Mike Tyson will always be remembered as the toughest and most terrifying super heavyweight boxer. With his dynamics, he gave us one of the brightest eras in the world of boxing. And for that, we must be grateful to him. Mike, it was unforgettable. I want to thank everyone who enjoyed this video. I would also love to hear from you. So leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any new videos.